So you've never used server-side Google Tag Manager and you're looking for a way to get started. Well, then you're in the right place. In this video, I'm gonna go over all the steps you need to take to set up your first server-side Google Tag Manager container. Let's dive in. Hey, and welcome to the channel. My name is Leon. This channel exists to help you make better decisions in your daily work using your web stats. Before we dive into the content of the video, I have two things. First of all, there's an affiliate link in the video description to a service called Stape. And I believe that service is the easiest way to get started. I will show it to you also in this video. By using that affiliate link, you support the channel at no extra cost to you. Secondly, I have created a short cheat sheet on how you can grow your website traffic. So if you're interested in growing your website traffic, just head over to the video description for a free download link there as well. All right, with that out of the way, let's open up our first server-side Google Tag Manager container. And I wanna start out by just going into Google Tag Manager and head over to our account. And as you can see, my account is a kind of a mess because I do a lot of training and I do make a lot of videos and I rarely take the time to clean this up. What you need to do is you need to look for your existing container. So don't make a new account. I assume you already have Google Tag Manager. So just go to the account you already have and press these little dots in the top right corner and then say create container. And here, this is the place where we can make our server side Google Tag Manager container. And the reason that I added to my existing container is just for maintenance. It's just a lot easier to maintain your setup if it's in the same account. Then you can pick whatever account name you like. So you could do something like server side container. But what I like to do is I like to enter in the URL of the site that the container is on. And in this case, it's a server side container. Um, so it's on uh, leonkortweg.nl, that's my site. And my server container is usually on a subdomain. So usually I would do something like data dot leoncortech.nl or gtm dot leoncortech.nl or analytics dot leoncortech.nl because those are all really clear names. But lately I've been working with like shorter names and more random names. So for instance, the letter N. So I'm just really making it up as I go. Why do I do this? Because we want to kind of hide our tracking setup from ad blockers. So that's the reasons like if you use gtm dot leoncortech.nl it's probably a lot easier for an ad blocker to point out, oh, that's tracking. I'm going to block those data transfers. So let's just go for the letter D for data. And um, I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to create my container. So this is really the first step. And then we get the window that says install Google Tag Manager. You can automatically provision your tagging server. And this is if you proceed with this route, you would host your container on the Google Cloud Platform. And um, I've made a separate video on this, but I believe that is not really the easiest way to get started with server-side tracking. I believe there's an easier way. If you're interested to find out what's the best way for your situation, like the Google Cloud or Stape, just head over to the video description. I will link to a separate video that I did on this very topic. So right now I wanna go for manually provisioning the tagging server, and I am going to copy this container configuration. So now that we have created our server-side Google Tag Manager container, all we need to do now is we need to open up a hosting package for our container. And as I already mentioned, I wanna do this with Stape because I believe that's the easiest way to get started. And again, there is an affiliate link in the video description if you wanna follow along and if you want to support the channel. So highly appreciate it if you use that link. I'm gonna follow that link and I'm gonna go to this button that says try for free. And I'm gonna sign up using my kortweg.blog.gmail.com. I'm gonna host this in the EU and I'm gonna accept the terms and I'm gonna press sign up. So here you need to do some email verification. I'm gonna go in and do that and I'm gonna come back in a second. All right, so I'm back. I've just followed the link in my email. I've set my password and this is the screen that we have right now. And this means that we have opened up our account. The next step is to link our Stape account to our server-side Google Tag Manager container. So we want to open up our first container by hitting this button, create container. I'm gonna call this the same that I did here. So I'm gonna call this d.leonkortweg.nl. I'm gonna copy the container configuration from my Google Tag Manager server container. I'm gonna paste it in 
and I'm gonna pick a server container. And, and since I'm based in the Netherlands, I'm just gonna pick the Netherlands as my server location. And I'm gonna create the container right here. So what I recommend is actually starting out with the free package. This means that during your setup time, if you just take a week or a month or so, you don't pay, you just use your free requests. But I do recommend that you upgrade your container to the next tier automatically. So that means that you need to set a payment and then the moment you hit the f amount of free requests, it's gonna automatically upgrade to, for instance, the Pro or the Pro Plus package. Because this is my training, I'm gonna disable this and I'm gonna continue with the free plan so I don't need to fill out my payment details on screen. But you get the point, if you use this in production, I recommend that you enable that and fill out your payment details so it won't break as soon as you hit the limits of your free plan. All right, the last step that is really needed in order to set up your server-side Google Tag Manager container is actually linking a domain name to that server. And if you have opened up Stape like I did here, there's already a testing domain that you can use. So I'm gonna copy this testing domain right here and I'm gonna go over to my Google Tag Manager container the moment I press preview here, I get a message that says you cannot preview this container and that is because we haven't linked a domain yet. So I'm gonna edit the container settings so I can do that by pressing this button or I can just go into admin and into the container settings. And here you have the option of adding URLs to your server site Google Tag Manager container. So this is the testing URL that I got from Stape that is here and I'm gonna hit save and I'm gonna go into the workspace. If I press preview now, this will open up my container on the testing domain. So it's this random string .net. So, and it says, yeah, there it is, it's working. Although this is a way to get started with server-side Google Tag Manager, I really recommend that you add your own domain name to this container. So this is really a testing domain that you can use while you're still working on setting up your own domain. So it's not a problem to use this for a while, but I recommend to work on setting up your own domain. And I'm gonna show in you in this video how you do this. Sometimes you need help from other people because you need to add a DNS record to your domain setup. So let's go into Stape. We're still on the home screen of our container here. I'm gonna add a custom domain. And uh, I already chose my subdomain. I'm gonna say leonkortweg.nl. And the moment that I fill out this, it's gonna give me a CNAME record, d.leonkortweg.nl, and then the value is euc.stape.net. So I'm gonna hit verify, there you go. And I need to add these DNS records to my setup. So let me open up my DNS management and I'll show you how this is done in Cloudflare. All right, so I'm logged into Cloudflare. This is where I manage my domains currently. It is well possible that your domain is registered somewhere else and that the screen on your end looks a little bit different. If you need help with this, just find someone that has a little bit of experience setting up DNS records because this is really a sensitive screen. You do not want to mess this up. For instance, if I change these records here, right here, with MX records, my email will stop working. If I disable these records right here, my website will stop working. So it is really a little bit sensitive to work here, so be careful. And if you're unsure or not really confident in what you're doing, please find help from someone who really knows how to handle this. It could also well be that there's someone within your organization who needs to do this for you. And that is when the testing URL comes in handy. You just use the testing URL while you're waiting for that other person to set up the DNS record for you. But here in the DNS management of Cloudflare, where I manage my domain, I'm gonna add a record. I'm gonna pick a CNAME record because that's what Stape is using at the moment. I find that this tends to change sometimes. So just use whatever is here on the screen, but type CNAME is here in this screen for me now. So I'm gonna use the CNAME record. I'm gonna use the letter D. So don't copy the whole thing. In this case, it will work, but that's a very common error. And then the target, that is the value that we are looking for. Let me see, do I want to proxy it? This is a functionality by Stape. I'm just gonna use DNS only. 
TTL, I'm gonna leave it to auto because I find that the Cloudflare tends to update really fast. But if you don't have the option, just pick a very low value here. So for instance, one minute or five minutes. And then I'm gonna press save. So I'm gonna refresh this screen. Sometimes this goes really quick, but um, in the meanwhile, we can copy this domain. I'm gonna go into Google Tag Manager. I'm gonna go into admin again. And I'm going to go into container settings because I want to add my final container URL to this list as well. HTTP S D.LeonCorte.nl And I'm going to hit save. So the moment I go back into my workspace and I hit preview, I still get the testing domain right here. So what I want to do here is I want to press this list icon and you only see this icon whenever you've filled out more than one URL. And then I want to switch to my real domain. Then I'm going to hit preview and then it's going to try to open up my testing URL. Well, it hasn't verified yet. So I need to wait for this to happen. It's going to take a couple of minutes, but as soon as this is done, you will be able to preview it in that server. So I'm gonna switch back to my testing domain because it's not available yet. There's one final trick that I want to show you. If you just copy the domain of your container, so either your testing URL or your final URL once that is verified, and just paste that in and go to healthy, you will be able to test if the server container is still working or not. So that's a good trick. If you're doubting, like, is my server container still up? Just go into the URL and then slash healthy in order to find out if it's still up and running. All right, that's it for today. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. That really helps me get these videos out to as many people as I can. If you have any questions, on server-side tracking or a question in general on tracking, please leave a comment down below. I might do a video on this topic next. So I always love to hear from you guys. So thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.